Good evening, Ohio. James Ernest of the Grueling Truth here with the authority, Eddie Torres. Eddie, thank you for joining us tonight. I appreciate being part of the show. Hey, it's our pleasure. What sports did you play growing up? Oh, uh, well, my, uh, I was a big baseball player. I played, I was a catcher from uh, age of eight to about 16, 17. Um, baseball was my first. I uh, played uh, football. I was a uh, right tackle throughout high school. Um, also played uh, track and field. I did amateur wrestling, uh, martial arts. I did it all. <laughs> a nice, uh, uh, yeah, a nice versatile background, it sounds like. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I grew up in uh, uh, Newark, New Jersey. It was a city, and, you know, more of the inner city, and the, all that kept me away from you know, all the surrounding areas throughout the late 80s, early 90s was sports, you know, staying in team sports and staying active. And I was gracious enough to have people in my life and family members that were versatile in different sports. And so I said, I still committed and kept going. That is awesome. It's always good to have a family support. It really can make a big difference. Of course, of course. So what is your earliest memory of professional wrestling? Oof. My earliest memory of professional wrestling, I will tell you right now, was um, I want to say it was probably in the late 80s. And I first time I ever saw Bam Bam Bigelow on WWE. And um, it was, uh, I was so intrigued by the fact that he was from Ashbury Park, New Jersey, which is not that far from where. And... Uh, he had a tattoo over his head, <laughs> you know, like I thought that was pretty cool. And he was a big guy that could move. And it was just, he was impressive to me considering, you know, out of everybody like the Hulk Hogan's and Macho Man's, which I all you know, respect and love, Bam Bam was probably my first real fashion, you know, fantasize about being like Bam Bam Bigelow. So um, that's my earliest memory. Awesome. So, uh, were you a big fan of his cartwheel? I was. I was dad, dad and his top rope, uh, you know, head drop, you know, the headbutt, the diving headbutt. That oh, was definitely. always cool. Yeah, I mean, the guy was 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 projected as a, you know, 400 plus pound beast, you know, from the east. And he could cartwheel. He was fast for a guy his size. He was tough. He was just, he lived. For being a Jersey boy myself, it was kind of like he lived. The, he was the epitome of what a just Jersey look was. The whole Jersey mentality, this big, rugged, mean, nasty, but very talented wrestler. You know what I mean? He was very talented. So I really loved his renaissance when he had that time in ECW, and then he went and had the uh, rivalry with Goldberg. That was uh, really nice. That that was pretty cool, and considering how everything worked out with him and the Fed and how the LT situation kind of went against him, I guess, as they say. WWE, I mean, ECW cemented his his overall demeanor, his character, his personality. It kind of lived up to the piece of the East being part of the triple threat. And that nothing, I, I would say growing up up north, I used to stay up to 2, 3 o'clock in the morning to watch that, tw that 30 minute, mostly 15 minutes because they had a lot of commercials, but 30 minutes of ECW television. You know what I mean? So... It was, and Bam Bam Bigelow was, to me, like, I guess people would assume Roman Reigns are to them now, or, or Batista, or not Batista, I'm sorry, Brock Lesnar and things like that. He was the true beast, you know? Exactly. So. And just like uh, Lesnar, um, Bigelow did uh, some MMA. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I found that out, like, during Wikipedia first started coming around. <laughs> nice. So. so who trained you? I was trained, uh, funny enough, I got into the business through a close personal friend. I moved from New Jersey to Florida in the late 890s to Tampa. And um, uh, my original trainer, short term it was, was uh, actually Frenchie Martin, which he went by Curry Martel. He was the manager to Dino Bravo in yeah. the late 80s. Uh -huh. Yeah. He, his son and myself were actually close friends with a mutual friend that I knew and we all became friends and we found out he, his father was a former professional wrestler, legend in the territories in Puerto Rico and different places, Canada, French Canadian. I trained with him in 2000-ish and then um, 
asked me how to go back and forth, and then I got connected with Steve Kern in Tampa on Steve Kern School of Hard Knocks. And um, that's where I got my full training with him and Jimmy Del Rey. So who trained with you? Who were the other students? Um, I had, uh, local-wise, I had guys, well, basically guys who were not students, but those who were notable there were like, uh, guys like Buck Quarterman, who was a lecture of it. He was in, uh, TNA for a good minute in the early TNA days. Um, Dennis Knight, who was known as Midian, he was a student of his. He was also constantly at the school. Um, but, uh, notables, guys locally, I mean, guys who've done pretty well for themselves. There's a guy named Steve Madison. Uh, currently there's a guy named David Mercury. He was my uh, my good friend throughout the years we've been in the business together. He was a minor, in my class. Uh, Damien Angel, I mean, uh, a few other guys named. But um, currently active, those are the only two of the guys that came from my same class that are currently still very active in the Florida independent scene and throughout the Indies. What are some of the promotions that you worked for over the years? Well, I... Uh, Again, primarily worked in Florida early part of 2001 on. Um, started reaching out. I've worked for um, uh, some of the pro drivers. Obviously, IPW Florida. I worked for Full Impact Pro, uh, FIP, um, in two different incarnations within the promotion when it first started and on recently. Um, they're part of the whole WVN network. Um, I've worked for uh, DCCW, which is based out of uh, Northern Florida. I've worked for uh, Georgia Promotions out there uh, in the late 90s. I mean, early 90s, 2000s and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Cleveland, I actually worked for CKCW Cleveland, Ohio, because you're Ohio, right? Yep. Uh, we first started, me and my partner, Damon Angel, were called State Line. We worked for CKCW a few years back. Um, we've traveled... A lot of times, before YouTube became a big thing and social media, we were really circling the, the territories, mostly down in the southeast, but um, been around. A lot of shows that were just, you know, not that notable, and some of them that were pretty well established in, in the independence. So it sounds like a lot of experience in your career. Uh, yes, I'm actually, uh, started in 2001, debuted in my first match in 2001, and I'm actually going to be in my 19th year anniversary coming this October. Nice. So, yes, yeah, sir. So with, having, been a trip. so with having all those matches, what is, your, and I know this is going to be hard to pick out, but what's your favorite match? Uh, my favorite match, I would say, is, uh, during the transition period in business, you know, you always look for that guy that's considered the top guy, right? Any wrestler, whoever wants to be in the business, you should want to go against the best that everyone puts over. You know, say, hey, this guy's the guy you should face. This is the guy who's going to elevate your game. Um, I worked a guy named the Marquis Bruce Antee. I mean, he's done very well. He did a lot of stuff in early TNA days, too. SCW stuff. Um, very notable. Six foot three. Uh, or four around that age, big, massive heavyweight, you know, when heavyweights were heavyweights. And uh, um, he gave me my first shot, he gave me my first try, and I had a good succession of matches with him where it elevated my ability to want to be a better professional wrestler, you know. So that's probably my fondest memory is having an opportunity where he pushed me to become more. I think he really is the person that kind of established my my very strong statement of calling myself the authority because it's kind of more of a statement than it is necessarily a moniker. You know, I, I find that what I've done in the business is, is a lot of it based off his mentality and his hard work on me to make me a better professional. So what was it like touring uh, the country as state lines? It was fun. My, my partner, Damon Angel, um, him and I, we... Uh, tag locally for a long time and then we started we had some opportunities we did some uh, a lot of extra uh, um, extra work and uh, had an extra few enhancing matches with NXT about three years ago um, we just try to travel around try to get as much rapport try to bring back the, the, the essence of tag team wrestling again you know the dynamic like, like those of the brain busters and heart foundation and, you know those kind of guys and um, it was interesting. It was fun. You know, the road is always the best place. I mean, obviously, the dream is to be contracted. The dream is to be out there making name. But the, 
the independent scene has flourished within the last five to six years more than ever, and it's been a wild trip coming up to seeing KCB being that kind of like old dog in the new age, but it's, it's been giving me a new, my, and my partner, the ability to push ourselves, because I look at wrestling as a competition, so both of us have the same mentality, so it's been, it's been fun, a lot of great times, a lot of, a lot of sleepless nights, road trips, and, um, you know, shenanigans. <laughs> I know what so. you mean. You, yes, man, you mentioned uh, heavyweights. I was going to say, uh, in NXT, you went up against two of the heaviest of the heavyweights with uh, Heavy Machinery. Yeah, those guys are uh, top-notch, man. Um, yeah, don't get any heavier than that, right? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, I can only think of like one or two tag teams in the history of wrestling. Uh, shoot that, uh, there's oh, the two heavy set fellows down in Impact nowadays. And, uh, oh, I forget uh, their names. But I saw them a while back in an OVW show. And the crazy thing was, they did a, they uh, did the, where they jump out of the ring move, which baffled me at that size. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's, um, Otis is a, it's, it's, it's an impressive guy. For a guy his oh, size, he moves like a million bucks. And, um, and uh, you know, uh, his partner, I mean, those guys, they're tremendous athletes. The greatest thing about them, they're both, you know, for how they accomplish amateur wrestlers, you know. So they have a, that's a, that's a, that's a great part about it. And, um, and like you said, they're legit heavyweights, you know. And, um, it's, uh, it was an experience, like I said, it was a great opportunity, you know, it's always good to live, work with guys that are willing to work with you, and I have nothing but great things to say about them, and I'm happy for their success. Speaking about great opportunities, recently you had a great opportunity to go up against Sean Spears in AEW on uh, Dark. Tell us about that. Oh, well, that was, uh, as you know, uh, all of me wrestling is... is, is making wrestling great again in my opinion not saying that everywhere else and they're just bringing giving opportunities to some of the most revered and, and, and hard working independent wrestlers in the scene that's out there trying to you know do the best they can to get on there and be on the national stage and working Sean Spears was uh, an experience but I've, I go back with Sean Spears uh, I've worked for him uh, in the independence when he was first released from the Fed years ago and um, so I have a rapport with him so having the opportunity to work with him and, and, and to kind of catch up, as you say, in the ring, like any professional wants to do, was, a, was I mean, AEW Dark and all of the wrestling all together was a great experience. So there are things over there, and that's a great thing to do. Yeah, he's another one that has a top-notch wrestling school. Down here in, uh, in uh, Florida? Yeah. Yeah, Sean and uh, I want to say the... Oh, yeah. And, and, uh, yes. Him and yeah. Fandango, I believe. Uh, yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's him, him and Tyler. Yeah, they both. Tyler uh, Breeze, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, they're running a school in Orlando. Yeah, they're doing really good with that. I know it just up, like, I think within the year or so. But, yeah, they got a school based out in Orlando. And uh, they're taking their combined forces, which is uh, impressive. You got a guy who works for the Fed. You have a guy who works for AEW. And they're collectively... They have so much experience and so much repu uh, a great reputation. You know, they're doing some great things. So, when are we going to see uh, state lines in AEW? Well, I, I guess to be continued, huh? <laughs> Stay tuned. You know, we can never say never. I mean, it's it's a work in progress. It's it's a hopeful feat where me and my partner could go ahead and be in between addition to whatever opportunity AEW is offering. So. It's everybody who watches me or looks over and stay tuned. You never know. Stay live my cross pass over there. So what's currently the best thing about professional wrestling? Uh, I think the best thing about professional wrestling is the it always goes down to the crowd. I mean, COVID-19, the pandemic, I didn't, took a lot of that away, but the audience, the, the thrill of being able to entertain and work in front of uh, an audience was amazing. Um, a little tidbit, my my match, I had the opportunity to work in front of a live crowd, which was the first night that they allowed crowds to be allowed into the arena. And um, that thrill and excitement, not saying being in front of the television, but being in front of a live crowd, it's just the energy brings 
it's, it's exhilarating. It's just a rush. It's, it's, you know, it's something that provides like so much thrill and excitement into the business. You know, it, it, I think that the fact that people still continue to want to entertain and, and provide professional, great quality professional wrestling to the masses is, is still the essence of the business. Without the fans, there won't be no wrestling. Exactly. So, I mean, that, that adrenaline factor, like you said, I mean, with the fans, I mean, it makes such a huge difference. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, some of the ways that the sports has tried to either pipe in crowd noise or the whatever that dome thing or, you know, just uh, cardboard cutouts as fans? What, do you, what are your similar thoughts on those? Well, I think that it's, they're trying to make the best out of a very unfortunate situation. Like I said, COVID and all everything going on nationally has provided, you know, the inability to, to, to entertain in front of the crowd. So having to compensate with that, I get it. But like I said, it, it, it's, to me, it's, you need the crowd. You need that. You, you have to have both. It's, it's hand in hand. You need to have the crowd. You need to have the, the you know, the television's great. The setup is great, but the fans is what really makes it happen. I mean, as far as, far as everything else happened with the, the 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 added noise and all like that, it's it it, it kind of takes away from the professional wrestling aspect of it all, and it makes it hundred percent entertainment. Not saying that's not nothing wrong, but again, I'm just grateful that like AEW is allowing the crowd to come in at a capacity and within you know, of course, the limits of. You know the requirements is needed for that. You know, allowing the fans to really get back because the fans love it. I mean, I see it constantly on social media. They want to come back. They want to see it live. You know, so so they feel it just like we do. Exactly. It's, 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 but we need both. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, AEW, it seems like they're doing all the right things. It seems like they're really uh, making an impact. Uh, no, I, I can't say impact, but they make making a really great impression on, on the world of professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think that, like, not, this is not to take away from any other shows, from the Fed, from Impact, from anyone else, ROH, anything. But it's, it's, it's a, if they're going to start doing something, I think a lot of other people may want to consider that. Now, I think the Fed, their WWE has the opportunities, they have the ability to provide a, a arena. Or the Thunder Dome, as they call it, you know, where they have people coming in via satellite, you know, via internet and kind of like Skyping in or whatever the case, but it still doesn't, you know, they know, I believe they know, and I'm only assuming what they're thinking, they know what really makes it work, you know, people coming through the door, people watching it live, people reacting to the fan, uh, to, the, to the talent and to the wrestlers and, you know, the show all together. Definitely. Well, Eddie, we've greatly enjoyed having you on the show. Before we let you go, we want to know where on social media, where on the web, where can our fans find out more about you? Well, I have a, uh, my biggest page right now is on Facebook. Uh, my link will be the, the Authority, Eddie Torres, all together on Facebook. I also have a Twitter that I've been pushing hard on, uh, it's, which is at Torres, uh, all together. Uh, I'm on Instagram also. You can find me with the same moniker, Eddie Torres, as well. Uh, and uh, my feed as well, I have you as well, that has a lot of my ma- matches uh, on the end and, and a few other details. But, again, Facebook page is probably my highest quality uh, content, so check it out. And i um, got a couple of shows coming throughout the later part. So uh, stay tuned. Sounds like great. You, especially me. Definitely. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Eddie. And, uh, yeah, we'd love to have you back on the show again in the future. Appreciate that. It was good talking to you. Thank you.